coming up. And is it C? <gasps> C. The blurb promised an unforgettable Willy Wonka extravaganza. You must have felt like you struck gold. A golden ticket, yeah. The best day of these kids' lives. We outfits and they're all excited and it's like their Christmas present. But then artificial intelligence turned the fun. Oh dear, what is this? into farce. They're screaming, they're crying. Parents are like, jelly bean counter looks like the meth lab. And a worldwide debacle. A big empty warehouse with vinyl backdrops. Angry parents and a call to the police. You know that scam artist. People are owed an explanation. Hello and welcome to Extra Minutes, the 60 Minutes podcast. I'm Adam Hegarty and I'm joined by our producer, Sammy Taylor. Sammy, good to see you. Now, this is one of our quintessential 60 Minutes investigations, isn't it? The Willy Wonka experience in Scotland. <laughs> it was a rather different tone to what you're probably used to, but um, maybe we'll just uh, start with a bit of a recap. What was the Willy Wonka experience debacle in Scotland? Last well, year? I think it started with a meme, yeah. Adam, which is not how 60 Minute Stories usually That's start. A really good point. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. It uh, is a very quirky story on the surface it was very silly it, it felt very light-hearted you know it was essentially about a uh, a guy in Scotland that had decided he wanted to put on a Willy Wonka experience for families and kids in the Glasgow area um, and it descended kind of into madness <laughs> yeah, went around the world Jimmy Kimmel picked it up mm -hmm. everyone picked it up and these poor kids and parents who've walked in expecting a Willy wonka S chocolate factory experience and really they just got a factory, didn't they? In fact, it was an empty warehouse. It was frightening, actually. There were children <laughs> in tears, you know. Uh, it was a really kind of awful space. Mm -hmm. It was this dilapidated warehouse in Glasgow uh, that they'd put a couple of colourful props in corners. Um, the Chocolate River was made of cardboard. That was the one for me. <laughs> the Chocolate River oh, made of it? cardboard. Oh, look, it's a chocolate river. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, we were laughing hysterically at that. It, we? it was pretty bleak, mm. um, but very funny. You know, uh, on the surface, it, it, it didn't feel too serious mm. and it felt very much like, you know, yes, some families had, had lost some money uh, on, on buying tickets for this and there were definitely some disappointed children, yeah. um, perhaps slightly traumatised children. There was a yeah. very scary character called yeah. the Unknown. That's that the one, the Unknown. <laughs> popping oh. out from behind Looks like um, something killers. from Scream or a horror movie. Nothing Horrific. to do with a Willy Wonka experience, mind you. No. And so I suppose maybe that might have been one of the first red flags that this was uh, not the work of people or creatives or uh, the people you would usually expect to kind of be coordinating an event like this. Yeah, exceptional segue because that brings us to artificial intelligence, doesn't it? Oh boy, like poor Billy Cool, you mentioned the organiser. You know. He, it seems, planned this event with the help of artificially generated content and then that promised more than what was delivered that pretty much sums it up doesn't it i think he whipped it up pretty quickly um to be honest you know it's not hard nowadays to go online and use an ai software um to artificially generate images all you have to do really is put in a prompt and it will spit some things out at you within a matter of seconds and that's essentially what billy did you know he he put the words Willy Wonka Candyland into a uh, image generator and what it spat back out at him was pictures that he then used on the website, on the social media marketing, all of these things to kind of suck people in and uh, make them believe that that's what they were going to be greeted by when they rocked up. And that's the thing, isn't it? This was a bit of a funny, light-hearted story. Even the people involved, even the parents who were disappointed and you know, the actors accepted that. But it does bring to the fore a really important issue to discuss. I mean, how far this AI can go. And uh, I think someone we sat down with, Rebecca Johnson from the University of Sydney, what did she say? She said, if you're getting fooled by this, watch out. Yeah, there's a, a lot of uh, worse stuff to come. Her kind of reference points, at least, were that Yes, you can use AI to generate uh, Willy Wonka style images to make a website to uh, advertise an event. You can also use AI to deep fake, you know, political leaders and speeches and create unrest in communities and around the world. Um, it's a real slippery slope. Uh, the Wonka experience, I think, really just scratches the surface and is probably the most publicly accessible form of AI, just image generators, text generators, things that are now kind of 
part of what we understand to be how we use AI, ChatGPT, you know, those kinds of things. That's worth noting. ChatGPT, we all hear about now and probably everyone's dabbled in just writing something, you know, like give me an essay on something like this. Probably a few uni students trying to uh, yeah, pull the wall over a few lecturers and <laughs> tutors' eyes with some reports for university. But when we sat down with the University of Sydney's Rebecca Johnson, like I say, yeah, she gave us so many examples, didn't she, of how much more advanced this technology could be. Absolutely. I, I don't think people realise how frequently they actually use even just lower level AI. I remember um, a story that we did last year uh, with Tom Steinfurt. Uh, we interviewed an AI ethicist. Um, her name's Katrina Wallace. And she said the average Australian adult uses AI, I think, 28 times a day. Really? And they don't even know. So, what, what, you know, what, what were the 20? Uber, Siri, oh. it's in your Google Calendar. It's in, you know, all of the apps that you use on the phone. It's in your, you know, Amazon Alexa. All of these kinds of things that have become quite integrated and, um, you know, normal in our life are actually backed by some form of AI or improved by some form of AI. It's just this slow infiltration, isn't it? I'm, I'm lucky. I, look, I'm what, 36 and this goes over my head. So let alone <laughs> like, imagine all the people who aren't savvy enough. That's how people can get really victimised by these sort of things. 100%. I think our understanding of it even is really just scratching the surface. Um, it, even the advances that it has made in the last six months, 12 months, you know, 60 Minutes has looked at AI, AI, AI stories a number of times over the last, you know, 10, 20 years. We've done stories about facial recognition and, you know, various other things. Um, but to see the kind of rapid rate that AI is not only improving, um, but, you know, finding its way into our apps, into our lives uh, is pretty astonishing. Well, what surprised you about the onset of AI? What stands out to you as something that goes, oh, it's really, really yeah. getting somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I think um, a, a story that we did last year, again, with Tom Steinfurt, um, we went over to the UK to film with a uh, company called Engineered Arts. Mm. Um, and it's, you know, a huge company cutting edge technology doing some really really exciting things the thing that stood out most and perhaps you know was the most shocking and kind of astonishing i'd never had a conversation with a robot before yeah, yeah. and so I, as yeah, most yeah. people i don't know that most people I'm had not shocked had a conversation by that, with a robot before and so tom steinfurt was uh doing an interview with a robot called amica um, and Amica is essentially an, an AI language model, um, can react, uh, can, you know, converse with you. At one point, uh, Amica started singing Rocket Man by Elton John uh, to the 60 Minutes crew. It's pretty full on stuff. It's the stuff of sci-fi, really, isn't it? Like we, we are there, which is probably the take-home message by 100%. this. It was pretty crude with the Willy Wonka stuff, but again, to bring it back to that example, it's a sign of what's out there. And I think we've been there. Like, I think every single time a new kind of AI program uh, comes into the headlines, we say, oh, AI's here. I think AI's been here for actually quite a while, um, and it's up to people like Rebecca Johnson, you know, from the University of Sydney. She's an AI ethicist, you know, she's really looking into how we use this technology are we using it well are we using it for its best purposes are we using it in a way that's not going to harm people harm communities you know amica the robot is a lot of fun and i can see how it can be used in some really beneficial ways um, scamming people through a willy wonka fake ai website perhaps less so well, scams can come in all shapes and sizes, can't they? So, I mean, we spoke to Alana, a mum with the Willy Wonka experience, seven tickets at a cost of around about £160. Not great for no, a working-class family, but really just scratches the surface of you know, how people can be victimised. We know that some really high-tech scammers are using this technology. I mean, I was working on something the other day where there are now live deep fakes. So you imagine filters on Instagram where you get it up on your phone and you shuffle a little to the left or the right and it disappears. Yeah. Now it can be live. These free programs, right, just calculate your face, 
put someone's photo on your face and then suddenly that can be sent to people to scan them out of money, acting like it's someone entirely different. I mean, is that where it's headed? I mean, what have, what have you seen about how quickly it's progressing? It's really scary stuff. I think the deep fake stuff specifically is really frightening. Um, you know, the ways that it can be used in political campaigns or, um, you know, scam centres. The idea that you could be talking to somebody that you think is your father or a friend or your boss or someone like that and in actuality you're speaking to you know a scammer that's got a deep fake you know avatar posing as this person that you think that you're speaking to that's that's really frightening do you think it obviously depends on the the generation dare i say (laughs) but do you think largely people realize how advanced AI is and how much it has infiltrated society? Not at all. I, I think, um, you know, perhaps young people are a little bit more uh, Always. acclimatised, a little bit more aware because we've grown up <clears throat> with our phones, with Instagram, with things, you know, that are where we're kind of more exposed to this kind of content. Um, you know, a lot of people in, in different generations have never used ChatGPT before. You know, they, they looked at the Willy Wonka website and thought that that's what they were going to walk into. Whereas I would say, at least in, in our research for the story, when we were looking at it in, in the beginning, you and I were looking at those images and quite clearly said to ourselves, well, will these look fake? These don't look real. Um, even if I didn't have an inkling that AI was responsible for them, I would not have said that the Willy Wonka experience that these people were walking into was going to look like the images that they were promised. Yeah. But lots of people don't think that way. Lots of people looked at those images and genuinely believed that they were going to walk into a Willy Wonka candy land. It is, and hindsight's twenty twenty. and look, it, it is obvious in this instance, but the way when artificial intelligence is used in a nefarious way, it you know, tries to take advantage on how a certain group is feeling about it. So, so these are families who are looking for a magical experience in Drury, Glasgow. They wanted to do something for their kids. Alana, we spoke to, her kids were tragic. She, um, As part of our story, you saw it. They got the golden tickets out and they made it into this big thing. So they wanted to believe that. And when someone wants to believe something, this is how it hooks you in. And, you know, the poor actors that got duped oh, no. into doing this as well. So, they were you know, a great chat. They so were excellent, <laughs> excellent people to have on 60 Minutes with mm. excellent stories. Um, and a lot of fun and I was so glad that they could see the fun in it and the light-hearted kind of side of it because realistically they'd been duped into this too in a different way they're actors they needed a job um, I know Michael Archibald this was going to be his first ever acting job um, what a disaster <laughs> for poor Michael too, right? of course and I think um, you know they were given these AI generated scripts and even they in reading it you know first off went hang on this doesn't sound right. This sounds like it's all over the place. The same way they kept going. This is they the beautiful did. side to this story. <laughs> they saw the sad kids there and sad parents like, we're on here. We've got to try and salvage this. Didn't work. No. <laughs> but I think the parents but appreciated it. They tried their best. And, and Kirsty Patterson, who, you know, the kind of... The sad Oompa Loompa, you know, went viral as this meme around the world, um, really tried her best to make this as excellent for these kids as she possibly could. You know, she's handing out individual jelly beans and doing cartwheels and, you know, trying to console children that were crying. Yeah. You know, like she, she really gave it a red hot go to try to make it as, as good as it could be for these poor kids that had, you know, really thought that they were going to get to meet Willie Wonka and uh, and and have a great day and I think even if they didn't have the day that they expected perhaps the infamy and the kind of bizarre way that this story just blew up around the world and, and went so viral and was so talked about is maybe a little bit of a silver lining you know Lots of people were a part of the Wonka experience. Yeah, exactly right. Wasn't Kirsty a good chat? She was just so bubbly, and to that point, she really has tried to turn this into a positive for you know, people like herself, really wanting to try and put themselves out there. It was an important take-home message. Oh, I, just that she was such a ray of sunshine. Yeah. I think you know she was so positive about the whole thing, despite what had happened, and despite kind of you know, I, I think it really could have gotten overshadowed by the scam 
uh, idea, you know, that this thing was a scam. I don't necessarily believe that it was intentionally a scam in the way that it was perceived. I think Billy Cool was just a bit out of his depth and didn't know how to run an event or how to market an event. Yeah, no, I completely agree. <laughs> um, I, think you just I did up end him. up, yeah, feeling a little bit sorry for him in the way that it had all kind of unfolded. Um, but for someone like Kirsty to kind of turn it around, make it this funny, positive, light-hearted thing that she could joke with us <laughs> about and, and, you know, go on social media and kind of become the happy Oompa Loompa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was it was kind of lovely. It was. I think she's uh, making bank off it now a little bit, isn't she? She's As got she shows off to London. As she should. <laughs> it's great. A little Why bit of not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, yeah, really fun story to do with you, Sammy, but also like, an important message underlying which people should take note of. But, uh, of course, that story you can catch on our YouTube channel as well as Nine Now.